Hey guys, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Come on in. How are you guys? Oh Lord. I probably should have told the office I was going to go live. Okay, hey guys, good afternoon. Okay, so you guys are going to be working with me today really quick while I talk with you guys. Um, so just bear with me. You're going to hear like all of the things in the background because me and my team were still working. And but I needed to come on really quick. Seeing them. Yes, hold on, guys. Please check Asana Smallbot receipts email. All right, guys. Good afternoon. Come on in. If you guys are new to my live stream, um, I'm Felicia Day, the accountability accountant. Guys, come on in. So we got a lot to kind of like talk about. Um, so we're going to be doing a collective of things. So while I'm talking to you guys, I will be working. So just bear with me um, because we're preparing a lot of our clients to get funding um, due to the coronavirus. So right now, um, I just wanted to come and talk to you guys um, really, really quick. Um, so. Alrighty, so guys, I'm Flash Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I help entrepreneurs and individuals live both their individual and their professional goals, and I do them three ways. Number one, I hold them accountable to do the work that they say that they're going to do so they can achieve the results that they want. I also give them the numbers, the accounting that they need to leverage and grow their business. And three, I push them to their greatness by giving them business coaching and everything. So Lavelle, thank you guys for sharing the video. If you guys have not shared the video, please share the video with your audience. Today, we're going to be talking about quite a bit. So for all of my small business owners, while I'm working simultaneously and giving you guys tips and strategies, you all need to be taking some notes um, because guess what? Things are going to be getting a little tough. Um... Give me one second. Things are going to be getting a little tough, and I don't think uh, many of you are taking this um, pandemic extremely serious, and that actually um, worries me, um, honestly. So basically, we're going to be having a discussion right around what you guys should be doing as small business owners right now in this particular climate and then also um what really is happening you know because there's a lot of fluff going on so many people are making um assumptions and the only assumption that i don't think people are making is the fact that the majority of minority owned businesses and small business owners will be closing their doors soon. No one is paying attention to that. Everybody is concerned about their tax refund check. Um, everybody is concerned about, I'm gonna have to do do not disturb. Hold on Instagram. Let me do do not disturb. Um, everybody is concerned about their stimulus check. Everybody is concerned about um, their tax refund, which is the immediate money. And yes, you guys should be concerned about that, but that isn't the problem. The problem that we're facing right now is the fact that over two, there's a possibility that about 27 million businesses will be closing. OK, let me repeat that, because a lot of you guys are just not taking things serious right now. And it's extremely alarming from what I'm seeing online and I'm concerned. So I'm going to repeat that again. 
If small business owners, especially minority owned small business owners do not figure out what to do and pivot successfully or find funding, 27 million small businesses will go, will close within the next six to eight months. Okay. The reason being is because JP Morgan did a study a few years ago and they realized that the average small business owner, um, only have about 30 days worth of reserve on hand. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that again. JP Morgan did a study that small businesses only have about 30 days worth of reserve. And so if you guys don't know how economics work, you might think that, oh, once they get the coronavirus under control, once they find a vaccine, or once they find uh, a cure to it, that things are done. No, that is actually the beginning. So just so you guys can understand how things are developed, it takes about a year to get a vaccine. It takes months to create, to find a cure for something, okay? So right now we're still in the midst of all of the mess. So what does that mean for your small business? So what does that mean for you guys as small business owners? That means that you guys have to figure out solutions, solutions to your present and future cash flow problems. Are we on the same page? You guys are gonna have to find future solutions for your cash flow problems, okay? Future solutions. And it starts now. Future solutions. Okay. All righty. So, this is the kicker. Many people are saying that you guys should hold out and paying your mortgages and um, they're not going to be paying their bills and stuff like that. So, I went on my uh, mortgage website today to pay my mortgage, right? And clearly in the coronavirus update, right, they are offering their type of um, relief and come to find out their relief is considered a forbearance. So if you guys don't know what a forbearance is, that is temporary relief of your payment. So for example, of my mortgage payment, if I was to call them and ask for forbearance, they will be able to delay March, April, and may uh mortgage however guess what somebody put guess what for last day in the chat guess what y'all guess what guess what y'all that is only five that is not right i'm gonna have to print this page out guess what y'all Okay, I cannot print this at all. So guess what, y'all? All your payments are going to end up being due in June. I'm going to repeat that again. If you were to apply for forbearance right now, and I can even pull up the site and even show you guys when I log back in to pay my mortgage. I can even show you guys. I should have took a screenshot of it. It broke it down. So if you're asking for forbearance for March, April, and May, all your payments, March, April, and May, and June's payment will become due in June. All the payments at once. Yes. All the payments at once. And so this is why... I am very alarmed. Let me explain. Because if we're already asking for a temporary forbearance, right? Why do they believe that you guys, all of us, will be capable of paying all four of our mortgage payments in total? How are they comfortable? How do they think that that's possible? So Congress needs to do a little bit more that mortgage is not the solution that forbearance is not the solution 
and many companies are still haven't fully come up with their policies. And so many of you right now probably didn't pay March mortgage or uh, March rent, and you're going to end up owing all of that money come June. Yes, Daria. Yes. So my my problem with the with with what's happening right now is that many of you don't understand that about 27 million businesses can be closed in the next six to eight months. But in addition to that, many of you will be losing your homes. Like I'm not coming on here to bring fear to anyone. I want you guys to really understand the impact that this can have on everyone that you know of right now. Everyone. Every person right now that you know of can end up losing their end up losing their house because they didn't understand the forbearance program that their mortgage company offered, okay? They didn't understand that. So I'm coming on here to tell you guys today. And then also, in addition to individuals losing their homes, guess what? If you're a minority, our biggest wealth tools is our retirement accounts. So if you haven't contacted my financial provider, right, then many of your retirement accounts are losing value right now. So in addition to you possibly being able to lose your home, one issue, the second issue is the fact that your retirement accounts are depleting. It's going to take years um, for you guys to recover. Two. Three, if you're unable to make your payments on time after we clear up from the coronavirus, you're going to end up hurting your personal credit. So then you're not going to be able to apply for a loan at a later date because your credit has been shot. You messed up your credit because of this financial situation that we're in right now. So guys, we have a major problem in hand. It is much bigger than what you guys are thinking. Whatever you guys are paying attention to, that is not the true story. The true matter of the fact is that we are, forget about a recession. See, mostly, I think most people have this perception, oh, we went through a recession um, 2008, 2009. But that wasn't a small business recession. That was a homeowner's recession. That was set because of the housing market. This situation that we're in, it's going to impact the small businesses now, not their homes, but the businesses, the thing that generates the revenue to pay for the home. You guys need the, the businesses to pay for your lifestyles. You can always buy another home if your business is making good money. But if your business has to close its doors, how are you going to pay anything? let alone pay your staff, let alone pay your vendors. So this is going to have a bigger of negative effect on each and every one of us if we don't understand the ramifications of what's happening, not only with this stimulus bill outside of this stimulus check, but what is happening to the economics right now? What is the economy saying? What is the economy doing? And that's what we need to be talking about today. So if you guys are just tuning in, I'm giving you guys the real deal about what's happening with this economy right now. So if you um, are willing to share the video, I will appreciate if you guys could do that because many individuals are paying attention to the things that don't matter. Yes, you want that $1,000. Yes, that can help. But think about it like this. What if you don't have a job to go back to? Which is more important? You having a job to go back to next month or you getting a thousand dollars today? Let me know a job or business to go to next month or a thousand dollar check. Which one? If it's a thousand dollar check, put one thousand. If the, if it's the business, put business in the chat. Let me know what y'all thinking because I'm not concerned about that one thousand dollar stimulus check. And so I'm going to tell you why I'm concerned about the, big, the, the small businesses because you guys probably are wondering, Felicia, they're coming up. 
Girl, for like they didn't incorporate $20 million for the small businesses. This is what y'all telling me. Y'all probably laying me out right now. For like they didn't did this for the small business. For like they didn't did this for the... No, 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 no. Everything that has been implemented is not is not for the small business and not for the minority owned small business point blank period and i'm gonna tell you why give me one second guys let me print this tax return for my client and upload it to um the office so they can send it off okay done with this okay are y'all ready to get started y'all share that video so tamika said so daria said pay what you can for as long as you can exactly tamika said wow they are not going to add it to the end of the mortgage no but that's what i want you guys to ask they didn't say that on the site and i can even log back in if you guys want to see um if you guys want to see what i'm saying i can log into my um mortgage company because i just paid the mortgage y'all like not even an hour ago he is driving. Okay. Give me a give me a minute, y'all. Give me one second. Hold on, y'all. Okay. All right. So let me explain to you guys why I am so alarmed about the small business environments right now. Because number one. Congress have not implemented anything for the $30 million, for the 30 million um, small businesses that's out there. For all of my financial gurus, come at me right now if you want those loans were not made for small minority owned businesses point blank period okay so do not be do do not sit there and gloat thinking that they created something for us they didn't they didn't create nothing for you they didn't create nothing for me okay number one here's why the loan requirements, the average small business owner do not own any type of collateral. The average small business, minority owned business, do not, do not, I must say, own any collateral. So collateral is assets. That's machines, equipment, um, buildings, homes, um, Roth accounts, retirement accounts. The average minority small business owner do not own any of that. So when the SBA say, okay, you lost $75,000, we will give you $75,000, right? Right? However, we need collateral where are you going to get the collateral let me know because they cannot use your house the collateral has to be business it has to be owned by the business that's what the sba said in the uh webinar that i just attended it has to be in the business name so as a small business owner do you have collateral in your business name i don't i don't even have collateral in my business name because I rent my office space. I don't own an office building, okay? What about you? And I'm, I'm sorry to say this, majority of the people that's watching, I probably make more money than all of you guys. And I'm not saying that the gloat, but I'm saying that if I don't even have any business assets outside of what's in a company bank account, do you? Hey, so Jimmy, how are you? Do you? So the average minority business is not going to get approved for an SBA loan. Guys, we are being pranked right now. We are being spooked. The truth be told, small businesses are going to lose if you guys do not step up and really understand what's happening right now and knuckle up on your, on your spending right now and really get everything under control. Give me one second, y'all. So if you guys don't understand what's happening, the truth be told, they've left, left small business owners in the sea to figure out how we're going to pull ourselves out of the ocean and survive on our own. There is no real solution. Check the bill. See, see. Yes, they did a lot, millions of dollars for businesses, but you have to be eligible. You have to qualify. You have to have to fit a certain bill. You understand? You have to have something to bring to the table. 
Okay, so for all of my online businesses without any without anything, even a real bank account, you are in trouble right now. Another thing, they're also requiring some funding programs are also requiring you to have employees. Remember, there are 2.6 million minority owned businesses and only 109,000 of them, including me, have employees. So you're saying 2.8 million minority owned businesses don't even qualify because they're ineligible because they don't have an employee because they don't have employees. But everybody's concerned about this refund check and this stimulus check and you guys are not understanding that you guys can't possibly lose your home, lose your businesses and you're already losing your retirement savings. Okay, remember the past year I've been saying this is going to be the biggest wealth transfer ever. I've been saying this to you guys for, for, for two years. I've also asked each and every last one of you to get your accounting and stuff in order. So last but not least, the average minority owned small business owner is not doing their bookkeeping. Okay, so guess what? For you to apply for the loans, you have to have your profit and loss statements. The numbers have to match, the numbers have to add up, and they're going to verify that it is, 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 is correct. It's correct because remember, your profit and loss statement is what we use to prepare your taxes. So if your profit and loss statement shows something different than what you put on your tax return, then guess what? You're also not going to be approved. Daria, that's exactly what I'm saying. How many small businesses will actually get approved? How many? very slim to none. And they already said there's no guarantee. In addition to them saying there's no guarantee, they're actually saying to go, go fish. You guys got to learn how to fish. You guys have to learn how to fish. So yeah, guys, you guys working with me today. So when I take breaks, I'm just responding to my team and stuff. Um, so just bear with me a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. So, all righty. So then that's another thing. And then also what I realized was that based on the eligibility requirements, they say that you have to have sufficient you have to have a credit history that the sba deem is sufficient that sounds shady to me look listen to this you have to have sufficient credit history that the sba say is suitable can you just tell us what what the score is like, can you tell us if you have to have a 550 or if you have to have already have your business credit established? Do you have to have your business registered with the get a, have a DUNS number? Like, can they really just tell us what are the actual requirements? Hey, Tommy. Hey, Liz. Elizabeth said they've already declined a lot of businesses. So, um, boss said that's the most important step of business management, bookkeeping. Yes. So Elizabeth said they're already declining a lot of businesses because this is the thing, guys, your small business, honestly, that don't have any employees, the government doesn't really consider you a small business. They consider you a freelancer and uh, you're in the gig economy. And so guess what? Uber stepped up and lobby and say, hey, could you guys throw in something for my Uber drivers? But who stepped up for African-Americans? Who stepped up for minority businesses and say, hey, you know what? You guys need to lessen the, the requirements. Somebody should have told the SBA, okay, that they should have lessened the requirements because the average minority-owned business will not qualify. So Daria said, um, the SBA deems so yes, what 
there's no code for that. That's why I'm upset, Dari. That's why I'm upset because they're leading people in the blind. And so this is the thing. If they would have had a certain credit score, then you could say, oh, they declined me because my credit score wasn't enough. Or they declined me by them having those vague requirements. It's no way to prove that we was discriminated upon. It was no way to prove that they did any type of negligence with your application if there's not a set form of requirements. So that's another red flag. There's no set requirements. There's no set requirements. So Dana said this, it's a joke. This stimulus package, they rule out black and brown, period. Has, yep. Thank you for sharing, Valisha. Guys, if you have not shared this video, uh, please, your audience is actually missing out on the actual truth. Like, guys, if you don't know who I am, I've been studying and reading all of this stuff and monitoring the, the, the accounting taxes for years. Anytime there's anything happening, I always break it down and, and into layman's terms for you guys to fully understand and grasp how what's happening in our economy impact you, your business, and your family. It is my mission to make sure that your business survives. So I have to be honest with you guys. There's no solution for your small business. Your only solution is to go out and hustle your tail off, work your butt off, build your business, build your brand so we could tell Congress, guess what? You still depending on small businesses and guess what? We survived. Now pay us our money, run us our check. We, we, we have employees run us our check. We have to show them that we are viable right now. They left us to survive and figure it out on our own. So this is why we having this conversation. So really what's happening every sector has already put in their bids but what they don't understand is that the requirements that they set for small businesses doesn't fit minority businesses that is the problem that's why we're here today dana that's why we're here those requirements doesn't fit the small business okay the minority small business and that's where my problem, there's no solution for us. Okay. Our only solution is for us to go out and work. So then, okay. Bryce, bye daddy. Hello. What? Hi. You, you dancing? You dancing? Uh, and the iPad. You got the iPad? No. You broke your iPad, daddy. So guess what? You gotta suffer for a little while. Then I'll buy you another iPad because you didn't take good care of it. Can I finish my live stream, please? Go ahead, Daddy. Go back out there. See you in a little bit. She's gonna give it to you soon. He's telling on you. That's what he's doing. He, he, she's gonna give it back to you soon. Please, Daddy, let me finish my live stream. All right? Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Close the door. Got your little headphones on and everything, huh? You ready? You ready? All righty. Your cord is under the door. All righty. Sorry about that, guys. Look, look. The kids home, juggling it all. Okay. All righty. So we talked about... Uh, oh, so the credit requirements is too vague, Okay. And so what I don't like about that is because they're not saying whether or not you should have already established business credit. OK, see, if you guys don't know, you have the opportunity to apply for this funding up until December 31st, 2020. OK, so that gives you the opportunity as you're listening to me to take a step back. If I was more informed or if we was as a whole more informed about the credit requirements, you guys would be able to jump out and go and hire a credit specialist to help you build your business credit so you can eventually hopefully apply for the loan. Right. But if they don't let us know that business credit is a requirement or your personal credit at this rate, I mean, at this amount is a requirement, then how do you know if you're able to qualify? How do you know if your chances are slim to none or if there's a possibility? So they're just basically telling everybody to go ahead on and apply. Great. Go ahead on and apply. That, that sounds good for them to say that, oh, we had all of the American-based businesses, all of the businesses, small businesses apply for loans over... 15 million small business apply for loans, right? That's the number they're going to focus on. Watch. 
They're going to focus on the amount of people applied, but they're not going to tell us how many people was approved. They're never going to tell us how many people was approved. So number problem. Oh, so, so, so the next problem is number four problem. Cause I talked about the credit. I talked about the collateral. All right. The next, oh, and I talked about um, you guys not having your bookkeeping. The other downfall with this is that could you illustrate that you can repay the loan? So um, Bob, we say most business owners, almost most must be aware of the collateralized assets. I couldn't really read it all. I couldn't even read it all. Sorry. Hey, Jonathan, how are you? Hey, Miss Joyce, how are you? So the most small business owners, guys, don't even understand right now how this tight bind that we're all in right now is going to play out. Most people are focused on the stimulus check. That's how they're distracting you. Okay, they're distracting you with the stimulus check. They're enticing you so we can jump to hooray, hooray. Oh, at least my girlfriend got a stimulus refund check. Such and such got a stimulus check. That's not enough. And let's really be honest. Anytime they've given us anything, we've had to repay it. Anytime they've given us anything, we've had to repay it. Your first time home buyer's credit. You're still repaying that. Remember? 2008, 2009, first time home buyers, you're still paying that back. More than likely, this stimulus check is going to, you're going to have to pay it back. So, problem number one, why there's no solution for minority owned business. You guys are not doing your accounting. I've been saying it for five years, going on six years now. It's very frustrating. Do your bookkeeping, okay? This is that unforeseen circumstance that I've been telling you guys for years. This is that that situation that we are not in control over, okay? Number two, the credit requirements too vague. We don't know where they stand. We don't know, right? Number three, the collateral issue. Most small business owners don't have collateral. I don't even have collateral, okay? Now, I own my own home and stuff, but they don't want personal collateral, all right? Then last but not least, could you illustrate that your business is capable of recovering and paying this money back? Because that's one of the main requirements, the ability to show repayment, that you have the ability to repay So my concern is bigger than um, these stimulus checks. My concern is the financial state of your business and your cash flows. Okay. And what I did, I did a class last night um, about the loans. I did a class last night about it loans, what other funding opportunities there are out there for you guys. I did it. The people that were interested, um, I gave them ways that they can try to get approved and what they are looking for, right? The people that wasn't taking things serious, and many of you are, uh, are not taking this um, serious. So I don't know what to say. But all I have to say is, I've been warning you guys. We have no solution. There's no real solution for your small business. I don't know why I said my connection is bad. There's no real solution for your small business. So guys, do you have any questions at all? Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? Any questions, y'all? Okay, look like y'all have so y'all good to go. So do not be blindsided. I know you guys are gonna get happy. 
about the $1,000, but honestly, you guys need to be concerned because there's no solution for about 27 million small businesses. There's no concern. There's no solution. There's no real plan. And remember, small businesses employ about 60 million employees total, right? But guess who's going to get majority of the money? The businesses. How do you feel about assigning personal assets to our business so we can, you know what? The, yes, yes, yes. That could be a good option, right? Because that's really what you're supposed, especially, so when you normally start out your business, you don't have business credit, so you're unable to acquire things under your business credit. So you will start off with your personal. It is okay to now convert those assets to the business that were originally purchased for the business, but under your personal name. However, if it's a personal asset, right, that you are now handing over to the business that have some tax ramifications behind it too okay so you, you may have to do you know a gift tax return or some stuff because the property value is high so it may have some tax ramifications um behind it so i don't i cannot pronounce your name i don't want to butcher your name michaela is it michaela but michaela say what's the best way to start doing proper bookkeeping the best way to do proper bookkeeping is more than just to go ahead on and start by having a software yes the excel spreadsheets are you know good and handy everybody use that which you shouldn't be with all of the technology that we have so just go ahead on and just start with either quickbooks and wave get one of those softwares and just start it if you can't afford a bookkeeper then start it but if you can afford a bookkeeper hire one and focus on making more money so just get started um daria said so what is the bottom line are they trying to get rid of small minority businesses so honestly that's I, I don't want to sound like a conspirator, uh, a conspirator or whatever, right? Or a conspiracy theorist, right? However, in tough times like this, only the bottom feeders really are the ones that fail. So I'm not going to say that that's their intention, but be, but overall, the impact is going to have that same um, um uh, solution or same impact basically so even if they don't want us to fail because of the environment we're in now there's a 90 percent chance that the majority of the small businesses you see now they're not going to be here because of this environment we in now so that was a really good question dana said the bottom line is bookkeeping small business credit and being okay with the government getting into your business matters is great detail <laughs> yep all up in your stuff, all your assets and everything. So, oh, um, so then also another thing, if you have defaulted on your student loans, you are ineligible. If you have defaulted on your student loans, you are ineligible. So come on now, who, who defaults on student loans? minorities who defaults on student loans small business owners because they're putting their money into the business so once again something here is going to hinder you from acquiring the funding that you need to maintain your business while we get things cleared up we have a problem at hand and no one is really talking about it. What's going to happen to all of the small businesses that does not have sufficient credit, that does not, does not have collateral, okay, and does not qualify for the loans? What is out? What are you guys supposed to do? So I created a little free freemium. So if you guys want the freemium, um, my team will be sending it out. I've made a post right before this video that's saying if you want 30 ways to save your business then put your email address there so if you want my freemium my team will be um releasing early in the morning tomorrow and you guys can take those steps to saving your business okay go to the post on my facebook and put your email address and leo will come and grab your email and send out the freemium in the morning 
Yep, it is a double-edged sword. It's a, it, it's, it is like basically we are used, we are set up right now to fail right now, honestly. And that actually worries me. Because I don't, y'all don't see what I see with small businesses, nor do you guys may not understand the economy the way I do. And so it is, it's, it's detrimental right now, y'all. And no one's talking about it. You guys are all being distracted about this stimulus check and stuff. And I think my Facebook feed, they probably don't even want me to tell you guys this. Because my Facebook feed is jumping. So my concern is that we will be swept under the rug. And you will end up losing your business if you don't persevere now. And take certain steps to get in control over your finances. So if the government has never made accounting important, accounting is so important today. If you, because they don't even consider you small businesses without employees. They consider you guys independent contractors, freelancers. That's the problem. If they recategorize their description of a small business owner, right and lessen their loan requirements then i wouldn't be talking to you guys today i would be happy i'll be jumping for joy like y'all the government got a solution hey 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 you know i'll be like really really pumped up dancing right you know no that's not the case that's not the case right now there is no solution for us no solution okay so last bit y'all got about two more minutes uh for um questions two more minutes for questions two more minutes for questions and then i'm about to go back to um finish working two more minutes for questions yes tiffany how are you love Okay, so we talked about, so let me just do a brief recap while you guys are probably thinking about your questions. So right now, many of you probably are spooked from what I talked about today, but I didn't want to spook you guys. I just want to be honest and be truthful. That's all I ever want to do. And so after really, after heavy consideration, after so much reading, and when I tell you guys reading, I'm talking about reading. Like I read all of the stuff, right? So... I realized that the requirements for the financing and the funding doesn't really fit the bill of the average small business owner. Okay. Even if the business owner is making a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, it still doesn't fit the bill for the for the majority of small businesses. Okay. Okay, so guess what? I'm upset because I realize that they're not also being straightforward. They're saying they're leaving so much up to the individual representative that you will be working with. So if you read anywhere about the SBA loan, everywhere says, oh, your uh, representative or your loan advisor will be able to explain things to you or your loan advisor will tell you whether or not you qualify. Your loan advisor will tell you if you are approved, right? So that shows me that honestly, if you have a discriminatory person that is taking all of your applications, then they can easily put a declination notice on your application simply because of the color of your skin. I'm gonna repeat that. Because they're putting so much control into the individual's um, representative hands, my concern is, is that represent, and, and because they're very vague guidelines, see the problem isn't just a person. The problem is the fact that the guidelines are very vague, right? Then that person has the opportunity to just decline you just because of the color of your skin. And remember, Byron Island just lost, Byron Island just lost his case last, the other day. So proving a discrimin discrimination case is out. Guys, we are stumped, but everybody's doing TikToking, pop locking, 
and waiting for a $1,000 stimulus check. Not understanding that your house can be taken from you. If you don't go and read the forbearance um, rules for your uh, mortgage company, your house can be snatched. Okay. Your car as well. Okay. Your retirement account is already losing money. What assets do you really own? What assets do you really own? So it's time for us to wake up. I've been woke, guys, since I've been online talking to you guys before four months ago, almost every other day or every day, right? I've been woke and I've been trying to wake you guys up too. I've been trying to wake you guys up as well. So what do I want you to take away from this? Go to my Facebook page. If you guys are on Instagram, I'm going to put the link um, tomorrow once my team um, give me the, the link or whatever. For Instagram, I'm going to have my team. I'll do a little story. If you want to grab the freemium, send me your um, email address. For all of you that want to grab the freemium, 30 ways to save your business during tough times. Uh, put your email in the message, sorry, in the message, in the post before this video, okay? Leo is going to come and collect everybody's emails. I think it's like 15 or 20 people that already gave me their emails. Put your email there. I have about 30 plus ways for you to get money in, make more money, okay? Um, basically, uh, what I would do, um, and that's basically it. Just ride it out, guys. Don't give up. Don't give up. You up, Dana? You up? Yes. Uh, Valicia says, yes, you have been woke. Yes, I've been woke. Yes. Daria says, $1,000 will not pay anybody's mortgage. Nope, honey. Look, I'm falling short. I, and then I can't even qualify. But this is the thing. Like, I don't even want you guys to get so excited because if you make over a certain amount of money, you won't even qualify anyway. So uh, Christian said, that check won't even pay my mortgage yet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all, they need to do away with that. Help out small businesses. Violicia said, yes, you, you stay empowering through business and finance. Thank you so much. But guys, I would rather for us, you know, if you guys are going to do anything, I would rather for you guys to mention what I talked about today, that small business owners, there's no solution for small business owners. You can go and pull up all of the SBA loan requirements. You can see it for yourself. And then think about this video today. You're going to say, well, why don't they have a mortgage, a, 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 a credit score there? Why aren't they saying you need business credit? You know what I mean? Why aren't they saying you need a Dunn's number? They are not specific. And that is not fair. That gives the people too much control to decline your application without you having any ground. OK. And in addition to that, it also allows them to say that they did something, y'all, when they really didn't do anything. You're welcome, Daria, when they really didn't do anything like, yes. Oh, and then think about it like this. Remember, if it's over 30 million businesses and they only given us what, 450 billion. Right. Huh. Let me see if Excel can do the calculation really quick because the calculator don't do billions. That mean on average, is that like only like $2,000 per business? Wait, wait, y'all. Let me do my cal. Hold on. Let me wait. Let me get my little Excel going. Hold on, y'all. Hold on now. I think I just hit the nail on. First of all, it may not even be enough money for everybody when I think about it. It's not even enough money. I don't even think that's enough. Let me do my calculations, y'all, and then I'm gone. Y'all know my brain, how my brain. If I stay here, I will end up dissecting every part of everything, literally, in y'all face, without any looking at any other data. Oh, my gosh. It may not even be enough money for the small business owner. So, Valisha said, and we can't go into the office and speak with someone. <laughs> exactly. No. Not now. Not during this time. No. Wow. Wow. Exactly. So this is the thing, Dana. They also said that if you have employees, you can you can get a loan above the two million dollar cap. However, there's a total cap between how much you're able to, I think, distribute. I think it was like four hundred and fifty billion, 
something like that. So I'm gonna put that into um, Excel really quick and see. Are you serious, Violation? You did the calculations before me? My computer running slow. Oh my gosh. Seriously? Oh no, y'all. Violation, don't do that. You see my face. Uh-uh. You got your calculation. Not you meant to say 20,000, Violetia? Not 2,000, huh? Hold on, y'all. This is this see, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly the mess that I'm talking about. This is really messed up. Huh. This is this is bad. <gasps> Did my team just kill it? Hold on, guys. Okay, so. It's 15. It's like 15,000. That's what I was thinking. It's, it's like 15,000 per small business. However, remember, some small businesses are going to get in, end up getting more. All right. Depending on um, whether or not they have a lot of employees and stuff. So, guys, the, the, the kicker is this. Focus on building your business. Please don't don't wait for handouts. My mother always said this. The government take care of fools and babies and none of y'all are babies. And none of y'all are fools. It is no time. Exactly, Dana. Dana said that's why most people will be denied. So do not wait around for the government to come and save you. They will not save you unless you're just the lucky one out the bunch. That they just want to just say, hey, here you go. You're approved. But I really want to see how many small businesses actually get approved. So if any of you do apply for the loans or do apply for any other type of funding please let me know if you get approved ah! all right guys so any last minute questions before i dive right back in i told my team i was gonna go to sleep too i told my team i was gonna go to sleep but that's guys what you need to do just make sure you do four things do your accounting okay if there's no other way, and I always say this, accountants will save the world. Literally, that's what's happening right now. The economist and accountants will definitely change the world right now, okay? Um, make sure you do your accounting, and then just stay focused on your business. Focus on what you're trying to achieve. And the bad part about it, look at my shirt, y'all. What is that? No numbers, no business. You know your numbers. You got a real business, right? So how many of you that have been watching me for years and years and years still don't have their numbers? Because if you don't, according to the landscape that we're in, you really don't have a real business. So it's time for us to get it together, set our standards, expect more, but make sure we do more. So I'm your girl, Falasha Day, the Accountability Accountant Guys. I hope that you guys have taken a lot from this live stream today and you don't focus because my goal is to shift your mindset. I don't want you guys to focus on that $1,000 check. I want you guys focused on continuously building your business and taking strides and saving your money. I want you guys to understand that there's no daddy, rich daddy back there to fall, fall on right now. Your rich daddy is your hustle. Your rich daddy is your habits. Your rich daddy is your discipline. Let's go out and do the work and let's show Congress that they're going to need us. They're going to need our tax money. And this is why it's very frustrating to me is because we keep getting the short end of the stick, but we pay the most taxes. And I don't like that at all. So Tommy said you have stress bookkeeping. Yes, I have, Tommy. I have for years and y'all know it. Because this was those unforeseen circumstances. I've always said you're going to need your bookkeeping for unforeseen circumstances. When you least expect it. When you didn't think you were going to need it. I've always said you were going to need your bookkeeping at that time. Okay, give me one second. Yeah, so last questions before I go, because they, I think we are rolling. 
Alrighty, so um okay, so oh okay, um Dana, do your accounting, focus on your business and um yep, and what you're I'm um, trying to achieve. Exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, guys, so don't forget if you're interested in my 30 ways to save your business during this tough time, go to the post before my Facebook feed on my Facebook. And if you guys aren't following me on Facebook, Instagram, I'm gonna put it on Instagram too. Go there, right? And put that put your email address and Leo and um Grace, the, the team is gonna send you guys everything in the morning. And if you guys have any questions, post them here. Um, but pay attention and stay woke. All right. Love you guys. Bye, y'all.